हेलो वेलकम टू द क्लास आई होप आई एम ऑडिबल तो कैन एनी वन प्लीज कॉन्फर्म दैट येस थैंक यू तो आई विल स्टार्ट अवे राइट अवे विदाउट वेटिंग फॉर अदर पीपल टू ज्वाइन इन बिकॉज आई ऑल्सो विश टू गो इन टू अ बीट ऑफ रिविशन ऑफ वॉट वी हैव डन वॉट वी हैव गॉन थ्रू for this uh, duration of uh, last week and uh, i had received uh, two queries also so i thought it probably uh, better to do a uh, a very quick revision of the concepts that we have covered and then uh, we would go ahead into the topic so um, the questions uh, i received so i have already started recording just to let you know so um, the questions that i had received one was regarding uh, why the holes are so important and what uh, makes the uh, semiconductors so special because of these holes so how the holes make everything work so um, that uh, query was received and uh, uh, well we have discussed all these things but maybe one cannot understand everything at the uh, first uh, go or something like that so we need to go through it again and again and we need to stay with the subject also for some time only then we will be able to understand everything so and the other query that was received was regarding the barrier potential so everything is related to holes actually so if you understand what what the holes are and how they contribute to the phenomenon of uh, uh, semiconductor conduction and um, the junction diode so you will understand everything about it so i will try to uh, formulate my thoughts uh, on a whiteboard today so i will not uh, go through the book for because i am i am covering i mean i am revising actually so i will try to formulate my thoughts around these two queries which will also cover a bit about the revision so let me present uh so here i hope you can see the white boards white board so Yes. Here, the diode phenomenon. So, is everyone able to see this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, fine. Sir. Fine. So, what is happening inside the diode? so first let us start with that uh, um the atom okay so you have a a semiconductor atom and so it is it is having a core and an outer shell which is having how many electrons four electrons right four electrons it is having this is a semiconductor okay and parallelly i am trying to draw a conductor so in a conductor this is a core okay the core means everything except the outer shell so if the core comprises of the nucleus as well as the inner shells okay so i have drawn the core and the outer shell and here the conductor there is also the core and an outer shell this is the core and in the conductor there is only a single electron so now you come to the concept so this is the structure of the semiconductor as well as the conductor now if i ask the question how charge or uh, how current 
flows they should be charge flows but we also talk like this how current flows so how does a current how does a current flow so for the current to flow there must be loose electrons right so in the medium through which the current is flowing there must be loose electrons which we actually call free electrons so now you look into the semiconductor and the conductor these are the pure pure semiconductor and pure conductor so here which one is a free electron which one has a free electron the conductor conductor this is the free electron why this is a free electron because this is so far away from the core the distance this distance is very large this is a large distance that this particular electron has a very light pull to the core so it is almost free so there if you provide a very slight energy into the conductor you will be able to take this you, uh, you will be able to move this uh, electron from one position to another okay so this is the free electron in the semiconductor is there any free electron no at this moment there is no free electron but what we studied is that when we provide some like due to the ambient temperature you, we studied that due to the ambient temperature the ambient heat what what happens is that some electron can come out of this pore and go to a higher orbit so whenever the electron comes out it is obviously because it has raised its energy level so it goes to a higher orbit and when it moves to a higher orbit now the distance between this electron and the core becomes more and it can behave like a free electron now this electron becomes free but you see as soon as a free electron is generated in a semiconductor a vacancy is created in the inner shell from where the semi where the free electron has released itself so this is the valence shell valence shell or valence band or valence orbit whatever you call it this is the conduction orbit you can say here this was the valence orbit and this is this is also the conduction orbit in the case of the conductor so the in the conductor the free electron is there from the very beginning so there is no hole there is never a hole however in the semiconductor when an electron becomes free then a hole is created because of the creation of the free electron so this electron is actually moving from this place to here so a hole is getting created this is the creation this is the creation of a hole how a hole is getting created in the semiconductor now how this hole gives rise to all sorts of phenomenon now you try to remember at every point we have talked about holes holes and holes now because of this hole all the different phenomenon that we have talked about has arisen in the semiconductor 
what are these phenomena we have talked about we will go through very briefly first thing is that in so in the pure uh, semiconductor obviously due to the ambient heat a few free electrons and holes are there which are capable to conduct some charge but uh, capable to conduct some current but very very low current because there are only a very few limited free electrons and holes okay and uh, so what we do we introduce impurities we introduce impurities so we need to talk about impure semiconductors so what are the impurities one is trivalent another is pentavalent you understand these terms trivalent and pentavalent so what happens in a trivalent impurity is that the semiconductor there is a this is the impure atom the trivalent atom so it is having three electrons in its outer shell and it is able to bond with a semiconductor this silicon suppose this is silicon here also silicon is here also here also in this side also but a bond takes place between so here is an electron here is an electron here is an electron from the semi from the silicon atom there is also an electron from the silicon atom here now this seven number of electrons come together and form an orbit which is the valence orbit so here so these seven electrons come together to create a valence orbit but since the valence orbit is having seven electrons that means there is one position where an electron could be accepted what are holes holes are exactly the same thing a position where an electron could be accepted so here the valence orbit the the trivalent impurity creates one hole so as many trivalent atoms are there in the impure crystals so many number of holes are created within the crystal so in trivalent impurities we have more number of holes so we call it majority carriers are these holes majority carriers are holes in the trivalent impurity of course free electron and hole due to ambient heat has been generated so there is minority free electrons and minority holes also however majority carriers are the holes because you can actually now uh, have a control on the number of holes available in the semiconductor number of holes available in the semiconductor you can control now so it is a p type it is a p type semiconductor with all holes more number of holes so i am drawing only the majority carriers so now how uh, how does the hole uh, help in conduction of current, uh, conduction of current okay so that is a question but before that let me just quickly draw the pentavalent type in pentavalent what happens this is a core and it has five electrons and from outside there are the silicon atoms coming in so four silicon atoms will give will be able to uh, make this complete 
as a valence orbit so i forgot to draw it in blue but you can understand this makes it a valence orbit saturated valence orbit means all eight electrons are present so what happens to this extra electron this extra electron comes out of this orbit so you know whenever a uh, whenever eight uh, electron orbit is formed then it becomes a valence orbit that the other other electron comes to a higher orbit now and it comes to the conduction orbit becomes a free electron so as many number of pentavalent atoms that many number of free electrons we are able to generate these become the majority carrier sir ha ah. yes sir how it became a free electron how it becomes a free electron because you see that these uh the silicon atoms from its neighbor this is a pentavalent impurity the silicon atoms from its neighbor are also contributing their atoms their their electrons to form bonds right so this silicon atoms will be bonded yes, to sir. the uh, to this pentavalent impurity with uh, with this uh, organic bond and whenever we are having eight electrons coming together that forms a valence orbit so what will happen to this remaining fifth electron here so you see the, 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 there are five electrons as well as four electrons coming in so total there will be nine electrons but you know that the outermost shell it can have eight electrons and it becomes saturated so what will happen to the ninth electron it will come out of these particular lattice structure this pentavalent impurity as uh, along with the four silicon atoms this particular electron will come out of it so it is it gets released from this uh, from this uh, structure so it becomes available as a free electron now and this is majority carrier because as many number of, we can have a control over the number of free electrons we are able to generate now and this is the n type this is the n type and this is the p type impurity p type semiconductor and here we are having only electrons as majority carriers now how uh, how the conduction takes place for this it is very easy to understand so if you give a, a external circuit then with a with a voltage applied then what will happen these electrons will be attracted towards this side so it there electrons will be a flow will of electrons and holes will move right there is there are no holes in this here i am only talking about the movement of the majority carrier okay i am not talking about the minority carrier only the only the majority carrier the electrons will come this side and it will it will come flow through the battery and from this side it will again come inside and this conduction takes place this is, this is the conduction of the electron so the current is in the opposite direction now what happens to this i am giving the same bias here from this side of the battery some electrons can flow inside because there are neighborhood holes to be filled up this hole gets filled up by the electron coming from outside this electron is coming from outside the hole is getting getting uh, Uh, this filled up the hole is getting filled up the electron is here at this moment now this hole is also available for the electron and from this side the positive side this electron is experiencing a pull so the electron 
will jump to this hole come here then jump to the next hole come here so in this way it comes to the last hole which is at the very boundary and then it again leaves the crystal it appears as though it will appear as though that the hole at this extreme end is moving in the opposite direction so the net direction of the current would be from this to this so this is how hole flows like it it is a quote in quotation flows it does not flow the hole does not flow the electron jumps from one hole to another and it appears as though the hole flows so the hole physically does not move okay but the creation of the hole helps an electron to move from one place to another this is the important phenomenon of the holes okay now this is a single impure crystal p type and n type but this does not interest us what interests us is when we combine this together with one side as p side and another side as n side this is the p side where we will draw this plus and like this minus plus means the holes and what is minus in a circle this is the associated atom in which the hole is there so if you consider the hole and the atom together there is a this this thing together is neutral in nature okay as we have understood previously also you see the uh, see this this particular structure no extra charge is created anywhere okay here also no extra charge is created additional charge from outside is not coming in everything neutral was combining together and a hole had been created all things were neutral they combined together additional electron was avail available for uh, for uh, as a free electron so no extra charge was created but if i consider this electron to be separate from the rest of this part then the rest part has to be considered as a positive ion similarly if i consider the whole separated out from this structure the rest of the structure has to be considered as a negative ion so i am considering like this only and in this side there will be minus and positive ion so free electrons and positive ions tell me one thing anyone can tell me this out of all these plus minus circled plus minus that i have drawn which can move about freely which can physically move only the minus only, only the minus, the minus. Only, only the only these can move freely these minus these things no other thing no other entity can move in reality so when all these free electrons are gathered together in the n side they are they are in a very compact cloud these free electrons in the n side so they will experience a repulsion from each other when they experience a repulsion obviously the electron will not try to come in come to this side it will not try to come to this side because there are more electrons this side the repulsion will make it move towards this side so the free electrons will cross this junction this is the junction this 
free electrons will cross this junction. As soon as it crosses, what does it encounter? It encounters that hole that is there in the valence shell in the p side. So, it will combine with that hole. Now, when it combines with that hole, then near about the junction, a free electron leaves this ion and combines with the hole makes this ion. So, when the free electron comes from the right side to the left side, it creates a positive ion in the right side and a negative ion in the left side. Similarly, all these are created. So, dipoles are getting created, you can see. Dipoles are getting created. So, this dipole is now having a particular potential drop across it. So, there, there is a like a barrier getting created, a potential barrier getting created where this side is more negative, this side is more positive. So, another free electron which was here when it is trying to come to this side, it is experiencing a reverse push from this negative mm -hmm. wall. So, when this push, when this uh, back push is uh, less enough than this, this particular push that, that means, uh, when this blue arrow is larger than this uh, red arrow, then this electron will again cross. But as it crosses, more number of dipoles will get created. So, in this way, as the flow of electrons keep on happening, the barrier width also becomes more and more. This region ac across the junction is called the depletion layer because depletion layer because there is no, it is devoid of majority carriers. You see, there are no majority carriers here because they have combined with each other. So, it is called the depletion layer and the barrier potential increases. So, there will be a, a point of time where the equilibrium will be reached. So, when the barrier potential will be such that the electrons which are getting repelled from this side due to so many of electrons uh, together will not be able to overcome the, this repulsion force will not be able to overcome the barrier potential. So, it will happen, there will be a phenomenon like this happening. So, now when we have to make this electron crossover, so remember only one thing that we can move in this entire crystal structure is this free electrons. So, we will be able to move these free electrons which were moving on, on their own anyway, but now they have stopped moving because of the barrier potential. If we have to move this free electron, we have to create additional negative wall in this side and positive wall in this side. How that is created? By putting a Rising. external battery source like this. The battery source's positive uh, side should be towards the P side and the negative side towards the n side. Very easy to remember, positive side in the p side, negative side in the n side, that is the forward bias. When this is happening, then additional energy these electrons will get to cross over to this side. So, when the additional energy will be there, when suppose it is this barrier potential is some Vb, which we know is 0.7 volt for silicon crystals. So, when it over when it is more than when this uh, battery voltage is more than 0.7 volt, only then this electrons will flow to this side. When it flows to this side, what happens? It recombines and there is a constant push now. 
and more and more electrons will flow and it combines with the holes the electron will come here so there is a hole and an electron is coming here this electron will go from this hole to this hole to this hole and then ultimately come out as if now a constant continuous current is flowing the electron current is flowing in this direction the actual current is flowing in this direction so this is how the forward bias works and when we have a reverse bias so when we have a reverse bias then we are not helping these electrons we are instead of helping the free electrons to cross over we are trying to pull these electrons these are the free electrons i am not uh, drawing the additional ions so instead of giving a force in this side we are giving the force in the opposite side there is a force of pulling you see because the uh, the potential in this side is positive potential the, the electrons are pulled in this direction so what happens this barrier so uh, instead of cross instead of the electrons crossing this barrier they come to this side and hence we are unable to experience a current a continuous current through this crystal because uh, in this part there is no flow so it is like a break in the crystal so it is like an open circuit here okay so it, it, it uh, we are unable to complete the circuit because of the reverse bias okay so uh, i thought of an analogy so i will quickly try to give that analogy so what happened is this suppose there was a flat ground and some person has to walk over this ground so when uh, in the when the situation was a simple p type or n type so this is the thing that can move so it can easily move from this place to that place so over this ground one can move easily but when the p type and n type comes together what happens is that uh, the road is broken down suppose some river is there now so this is the barrier this person has to cross so if the person has to cross this barrier then i must be able to if if he has a rope tied to him so someone must pull the rope from this side only then he will be able to cross so this phenomenon happens when we are giving the forward bias if this rope someone is pulling from this side then it is reverse bias so the forward bias helps this person to cross the barrier reverse bias does not help him pulls him further away okay so this is uh, some analogy i thought about maybe a very poor analogy but something that came to my mind so this i hope you now understand what is the barrier potential and what is the role of holes in conduction of the current the role of holes in conduction of the current you can see here the electron will flow to this side this side there are no conduction electrons in the p side let me again give a stress on this in the p side there are no conduction electrons
inside yes there are free electrons so the free electrons from the inside sorry the screen is refreshing a lot is there any difficulty from your side to see the screen no sir no sir okay the screen no, has screen has uh freezed in my place okay yeah it is working now okay the p side there are no conduction or free electrons in n side there are the free electrons so when the free electrons come to the p side they don't experience more number of free electrons in that side so they have to go over the p side in some manner and reach the outer end to come outside the crystal how do they go from the junction to the to this side they go from jumping uh, across holes from jumping from one hole to another they go so these free electrons when they come to the p side when they come to the p side they actually become valence electrons because the hole is in the valence shell so what happens there is an energy loss also there is an energy loss in the electron so the electron gives off some energy right it seems like this okay but i i as far as remember we are not uh, uh, will not mention this right away because there is some additional phenomenon anyway so please uh, remember remember this much now free electrons from the n side become valence electrons in the p side and these valence electrons are attracted by the hole in the next atom so they come to the next atom again to the next atom again to the next atom in this way the electron flows from a hole to a hole if this hole was not present if this hole was not present try to think how this free electron would have crossed this distance of the p side was there any way for the free electron to cross this distance of the p side just by coming to the p side it it now faces an entire crystal entire p type crystal to be crossed and we know that the crystal structure is very tightly bound there is there is no electron cloud there as there was in a conductor so the electron cannot swiftly pass through there is no conduction band in the p side so the electron will not be able to swiftly pass through a conduction band if the hole was not present in the valence shell the electron would not be able to pass from one hole to another and in this, in that manner reach the other end are you able to understand the importance of holes yes sir hmm. yes sir so that yes. is the importance of holes please note that okay and i hope the barrier potential is also clear now so we will move ahead now we will move ahead to the uh, what are the energy levels so the same thing about the forward bias and the reverse bias and the barrier potential would be explained from the point of view of energy levels and that is more deeper like uh, we are we are digging a bit deeper into understanding the energy based phenomenon that is happening while the barrier potential is getting formed and 
while we are applying the forward bias and the reverse bias. So, you see this, this picture in the left side. So, this is the nucleus and these are the various orbits and we know that the uh, uh, as as we move from a higher from a lower orbit to a higher orbit the energy level is more that exactly is drawn in the lower picture this is the age of the nucleus r1 r2 r3 are the different energy levels of these different orbits now we also know that this energy is not a single energy value it is a band of energy actually. So, to be more precise, there are these bands of energy. Mm -hmm. Anyone has any confusion? Are you able to uh, view the screen, uh, this PDF that I have opened? Sir, I have a doubt, sir, how these bands are related to uh, uh, valence shells, sir. What is the relation between valence bands and valence shells? Okay, uh, but just uh, confirm whether you are able to see the screen. Uh, yes, sir, we are. Yeah, okay. So, you see each orbit, we know that when an electron is at a particular orbit, there is a particular energy associated to that orbit. So, when we have a higher orbit, we have higher energy. Now, this energy this uh, in a particular orbit is not a single energy to be very precise because we know that the electron is also not at a particular distance away from the nucleus. It is not exactly in an orbit, but it is in a cloud actually. There, there is a, it, it is a probability phenomenon of finding the electron at a particular distance from the nucleus. We know this, the, the equation, Schrodinger's equation, if I, yeah, Schrodinger's equation gives you the probability of finding an electron at a particular distance from the nucleus and also the associated energy at that particular point. Now, we are not going to solve the Schrodinger equation because we do not need to know the exact energy at a particular distance. We only need to have a, have the concept that a particular orbit is not a fixed distance, but a range of distance. So, there is not a fixed energy, but a range of energy and that range of energy is called a energy band. I hope if this is clear now. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So, here you will see this first band, second band means the energy band of the first orbit, second orbit and this is the valence orbit, this is the conduction orbit. So, the con valence orbit is the giving the valence band, conduction orbit gives the conduction band. This is the intrinsic semiconductor, please note this because we have equal number of holes and electrons. So, it is a, it is a intrinsic semiconductor. The electrons, the free electrons will be in the conduction band, the holes will be in the valence band. This we have known, now we are looking, it, looking at it from an energy band perspective. Remember, holes are always in the valence band, free electrons are in the conduction band. This is what we need to have in our mind while we go ahead to understand the extrinsic semiconductor and the uh, junction phenomenon. So, this is the extrinsic semiconductor as you can very well understand in the left side we see the picture of a n type semiconductor because more number of free electrons in the right side p type semiconductor more number of holes majority carriers you can easily identify. Now, when we have this n type and p type coming together, then this sort of a energy diagram is uh, there. 
you see the p type is this much only this much is the p type and this much is the n type so the n type and the p type coming together and where their valence band and conduction band are situated that is what we are trying to see you notice this thing so something important has to be noticed the inside conduction band and the valence band are at a energy level which is a bit lower than the p side conduction band and valence band so in the inside the energy is a bit lower actually slightly lower how this happens remember from where the majority carriers have originated from the impure atoms so the notice the impure atoms atomic structure which is shown in the right hand side in the trivalent atoms which are giving the holes in the p side trivalent atom the core is uh, this is the uh, core is plus 3 and this is the valence band and the conduction band orbit and in the pentavalent the core is plus 5 so since the core is more powerful for the pentavalent atom the uh, orbits are also more closer the valence or band orbit and the conduction band orbit are also closer to the nucleus so their energy are a bit lower than the uh, trivalent atoms valence band and conduction band that is why you can see the p side a bit higher and the n side a bit lower now this is an ideal situation actually there is not an abrupt change of energy like this but actually the change is like this what you can see in the figure 2.25 a this is the energy bands before any diffusion of electrons are taking place okay so there is a gradual change in energy in the conduction band from the p side to n side so when the electrons will flow from n side to p side first they will go to the conduction band of the p side they will go to the conduction band of the p side and then come then fall down in the p side to the valence band of the p side so first they will enter this conduction band of the p side fall down in the p side so they will fall down from the conduction band of the p side to the valence band of the p side and as they are falling down what happens the energy of this particular uh, conduction band the average energy is decreased because the energy of the electrons are falling down and the energy of this valence band in the p side is getting increased so there is a shift in the conduction band energy level and the valence band energy level in the p side and n side we, and this gives rise to the depletion layer so this is the phenomenon of the depletion layer talking from the energy perspective energy band perspective okay so this sir, is the thing sir yeah uh, can you please explain again the uh, difference of uh, p and n energy bands uh, can you be more specific p and n energy band uh, why p, p p has more energy why p has more energy you have to n. look into this figure this figure so in the p side the core is plus 3 and in the n side the core is plus 5 so the outer bands are more tightly packed to the core in the pentavalent side in the n side so when the uh, when the uh, orbits are uh, more close to the uh, 
uh, nucleus they are having lesser energy when the orbits are farther away from the nucleus they are having more energy so that's why the p side uh, yes sir is having more energy than the n side okay so this is a very logical thing uh, there uh, are uh, like exact uh, calculations could take place but we are not uh, doing that it is outside the scope of this course so but logically we are able to understand and we are now able to understand this also that the electrons this is what you need to remember the electrons are flowing from the conduction band of the n side to the conduction band of the p side then they are falling from the conduction band of p side to the valence band of the p side and combining with the holes and as they are doing this the net energy of the conduction band in the n side is getting decreased the net energy in the valence band of the p side is getting increased so there is a shift further shift like this and as it is shifting and shifting and shifting a situation will come when the total conduction band of the n side is lower in energy than the conduction band of the p side that will mean that no electrons will be now able to move from this n side to the p side conduction okay so the movement of electrons creates this gap and at after some time prevents further movement of electrons by electrons i mean the free electrons okay so the depletion layer is formed and the barrier potential is there now how to overcome this barrier potential we need to increase the energy of this we need to increase the energy of this conduction band then what will happen electrons can again start flowing into the conduction band of the p side and combine with the valence band of the p side holes in the valence band of the p side so when we give a for, forward bias then electrons have come into this junction and flown across this junction then combining with the holes and what happens also that some holes also come to uh, to this junction so they combine in the junction or after crossing to the p side they combine whatever we don't bother the thing is that we are again able to make the free electrons and the holes combine with each other and when it happens the electron will come to this valence band combine with a hole and successively it will move from one hole to another and leave the crystal from the valence band phenomenologically the difference with conduction in a metal needs to be understand here the in the metal the electrons continuously move through the conduction band only from one end to another in the semiconductor it moves from uh, conduction band crosses the junction moves to the valence band then moves through the valence band and comes out of the crystal when this happens when this fall of the electron in the p side or near about the junction you can say it happens then there is obviously a release in energy and this release in energy is exhibited in the form of heat light infrared etc so it depends upon crystal to crystal how it is doped and some other impurities probably so when it is simply heat it is lost in the atmosphere but when it is light or when it is infrared then we have light emitting diodes or infrared diodes and light emitting diodes you know we have led tvs also you know so led is a very useful uh, product in the market in the technology market for products various different products are available with leds also with infrared diodes many different products can be formed uh, infrared it is used for uh, mainly for uh, detection 
uh, systems you detect something at a particular distance using the infrared so that is the thing so forward bias and uh, yeah now uh, several things without diagrams a very few things there is a relationship of the barrier potential with the temperature the barrier potential i have told you it is 0.7 volt but if we are able to generate some carriers within the uh, barrier then some current will keep on flowing right so the junction temperature is the temperature inside the diode it is different from the ambient temperature it is within the diode ambient is outside the diode junction temperature is the temperature within the diode so if the temperature is increased obviously you can understand some free electrons and holes will be created within within the junction so what will happen is that we will be able to uh, have a uh, uh, will, uh, there will be some uh, movement of free electrons uh, from the n side to the p side by the help of these free electrons and holes that are getting created in the barrier so the barrier potential will increase or decrease with higher temperature it will decrease because the temperature creates some free electrons and holes in the barrier so the free electrons in the n side will take help of these holes and free electrons to move to the other side so the barrier potential decreases and the decrement is there so uh, there is a rule that the barrier potential of a silicon diode decreases by 2 millivolt for each degree celsius rise so this is the rule so for every degree celsius the barrier potential decreases by 2 millivolt there are some problems associated with it it is asking how much what would be the barrier potential at 100 degree centigrade or 0 degree centigrade something like that so at 25 degree centigrade which is the ambient temperature we know it is 0.7 volt accordingly you can calculate okay so uh, there are uh, these few things we are at the end of the class sir yeah uh, the holes will uh, move in the valence band or in the conduction band holes are not moving first of all holes are in the valence band the free electrons are combining with the holes free electrons are in the conduction band they fall from the conduction band to the valence band to combine with the holes after that the electron in the conduction band will move uh, electron in the valence band will move to the next hole in the valence band so this electron now moves in the valence band not in the conduction band anymore Got it? No, sir. To see here, okay, I will show the energy diagram. See, there is a fall of the electrons from the conduction band to the valence band. These free electrons are moving across to the conduction band in the p side but very soon they will fall to combine with the holes because it cannot flow through the conduction band for the entire p side region so it will combine with yes, the sir. holes and then it will move from one hole to another in the valence band and then come out of the crystal yes sir okay yes sir hmm. so finally there are some things called the transient current the reverse saturation current so i will ask you to go through this part of the 
uh, chapter from 215 onwards this is the malvino book this is the transient current reverse saturation current and uh, this due to the reverse saturation current actually the germanium was not very useful because uh, there is a large current that gets created very soon and the surface leakage current I already discussed before. So, these things are there and this ends the chapter ok. This ends the chapter we will go to the next chapter tomorrow. So, you just uh, read these two phenomena of transient current and reverse saturation current they are not very difficult to understand. So, I leave it to you. Uh, to uh, read this and understand this what are these things ok. So, we will start with the next uh, topics which actually will lead us to solving numerical problems more numerical problems which is in the diode theory and uh, here we will actually start looking at circuits as you see very soon in the chapter we are having diodes placed in a circuit. So, we will understand the symbol of diode and how the current behavior is there. So, all these things will get revealed uh, from tomorrow onwards ok. So, I uh, thank you for uh, being attentive in the class and now I will end the lecture. Thank you sir. Ok, so anything you have any query regarding what we I discussed today, uh, please write it down uh, in Thank chat you, or anywhere. So, uh, if possible I will uh, discuss again in, uh, tomorrow. This first few chapters are a bit uh, engaging uh, because this physics needs to be understood. The clarity, the has to be there in terms of the understanding of the phenomenon why it happens. But after that you will see it, uh, when we start with the circuits we may even forget the exact physics um, because the formulas will come and we will understand how to solve circuits. So, it will become uh, a bit mechanical also at times, but keeping in mind the theory uh, remains important because any any point of time if you forget about the entire thing and you remember the fundamentals you can again build your uh, knowledge base from starting from that fundamental and you can understand the um, solutions easily if you have some idea of the fundamentals. So, anyway I will leave now because maybe another class is there starting for you. So, thank you for your attention and uh, I will upload the video also. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.